you're staring down retirement with nothing saved, you're not alone. Five in 10 retirees have less than $50,000 saved and will fall into poverty during retirement. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with three investing strategies you can use in retirement to make your money last, no matter how much you saved. I'll reveal three ways to produce that cash flow you need in retirement. And even if you've got decades left to retirement, this is something you need to see. We are in a retirement crisis with more than 60% of retirees without enough money to pay their bills. This is a survey by Go Banking Rates, and we're looking at the boomers and seniors here, but these facts apply to every generation when it gets to retirement. Nearly 3 in 10 retirees have nothing saved at all, the orange bar here, and another 2 in 10 have less than $10,000 saved. That's less than $10,000 to live for the next 30 years or more. But even if we count up to $100,000 saved, that's the first four bars. That's six in 10 retirees that do not have enough save to live off according to traditional investing strategies. Fidelity estimates that a retired couple will spend over $238,000 on healthcare alone, and this chart shows just how fast your savings disappears in retirement. This shows five savers at 65 years old, retirees with 50,000 saved all the way up to 250,000. We withdraw just $1,500 a month, 18,000 a year to help pay living expenses, and look at how fast you're left with nothing. $50,000 is gone in three years, and for more than six in 10 retirees, even with $150,000, you're broke before 75 years old. And that's only withdrawing $1,500 a month in addition to Social Security, if that's even gonna be there. With the average Social Security benefit at $1,830 a month, that means less than $3,000 a month after taxes to live on. And that's while the money lasts. But now what about the 4% rule? You're supposed to be able to withdraw 4% of your money each year and not have to worry about it running out, right? But that 4% rule is just a hopeless pipe dream for most retirees. Withdrawing just 4% off of $100,000 in savings each year, that'd be just $4,000 or about $3,000 a month. Hell, ramen noodles alone are $47 a month. And don't laugh because without one of these three retirement strategies I'm gonna show you next, that's about all you can afford, ramen noodles three times a day. Before I show you that first strategy, I know what you're thinking. Investors have made 34% a year on Tesla for over a decade, and even the overall market for tech stocks, the NASDAQ 100, has produced a 14% return each year. So if you just put all your money in tech stocks, 14% of, say, $200,000 in retirement savings would be an extra $28,000 a year to live on. And that's fine until a crash wipes out 30% of your money. Or if Tesla has one of its characteristic roller coasters, selling stocks at this point would destroy destroy your savings. That's why this first retirement strategy, one of my favorites, the bucket strategy, is going to give you the growth of stocks, but also safety in a crash. Now, the basics here are separating your money out into three accounts, each with different levels of cash flow, safety, and return. I'm going to walk you through this step by step, but you're spending down from just one bucket while you let the others fill up from returns to keep that cash growth. This all starts with that first bucket or account. Here you hold enough cash in super safe money market funds or, or just short-term bond funds to cover about 18 months, up to two years of living expenses. So let's say your living expenses are $42,000 a year, about 20 grand after social security. So here you would put maybe 30 or 40,000 in this first account and invest it in those investments you know are gonna be there when you need them. An example here would be the no penalty CD from CIT Bank paying 4.9% or the 4.5% interest you'll earn on savings in the SoFi account. In fact, SoFi is running a special promotion right now. You're going to get up to $275 when you open an account and transfer money. When you use the link, I'll leave below. We are not talking much growth here. You're going to come out just a little ahead of inflation, but you're going to need this money each month, so that's not the point. The point is that safety and knowing that you've got the cash to pay your expenses set aside for the next 18 months. This second bucket or account, you want to put another two or three years worth of expenses and I'm going to explain why this is next. So revisiting that example, we need 20 grand a year after SSI, then you'd put between 40 and $60,000 in this next account and you're going to invest it in safe dividend stocks, long-term bond funds, and real estate investment trusts. So this is your cash generating bucket. These investments are riskier than we saw in that first bucket, but still fairly safe, and they produce some great cash flow, but we're not talking about those high-yield dividend stocks or the risky tech stocks just yet. Besides those bonds and real estate, the riskiest you want here in these, this bucket is dividend stocks in the utilities and consumer staples sector. Examples for this bucket might be the Vanguard Long-Term Bond Fund, the BLV, which pays a 4% dividend yield, 
or the Vanguard Real Estate ETF, the VNQ, which pays a 4.4% dividend. Or you might consider stocks like Duke Energy, which pays a 4.3% dividend and has produced a 7.7% annual return over the last decade. And the idea here is cash flow, that each year you're gonna take however much you spent from this first bucket and refill it from the second bucket. For example, say you spent $20,000 of your first bucket investments in that first year. You withdrew $20,000 from your CD investments or savings. And you then go into your second bucket, take $20,000 out, whether it's from the cash generated by those dividend stocks or, or just selling some of that in there. You use that money to refill your first bucket. Now this means you know you'll always have that money to pay your living expenses because each year you're refilling that first bucket with the cash you need. Each year you take money out of your second bucket to replace whatever you spent in the first. So you always know that you'll have at least 18 months of living expenses in safe cash-like investments. Finally, in this third bucket, you have everything left for a more aggressive portfolio of stocks and long-term investments. This account is gonna give you that growth that you need so you don't run out of money. This is where you can invest in the Tesla stock and the fast growing tech stocks. But with this strategy, you're protected from those market crashes. And that's because in the years when the market is up, you can take some money out of your aggressive bucket to refill that second one. So you see, we're always trying to keep those first two buckets filled. But the real genius of this bucket strategy is that it protects you from selling stocks in a market crash. You've got upwards of five years worth of living expenses just in those first two buckets. You know, you've got 18 months of living expenses in cash and CDs, along with another two or three years of expenses in your safe bonds and dividend portfolio. And that means if the stock market were to crash it and you don't wanna sell those long-term growth investments in the third bucket, you've got five years or more for, to wait for those prices to come back. In this scenario, instead of selling your stocks each year to refill that cash bucket, that second bucket, you can just wait it out use the money in the first two buckets to live on while those stocks rebound from the crash. So that's all the safety you need, that time this strategy gives you to wait out any weakness in the market. Let those investments recover so you're not selling at a loss. It also gives you the maximum in return though because you're able to have those growth stocks and the long-term plays in that third bucket. Now pros of this bucket strategy are that it gives you the opportunity for that upside return but also protects you from the market crashes. Downsides are that you're going to be tempted to invest in those riskier assets in your first bucket. Nation, I know it sucks to see the 18 months worth of expenses just sitting there earning less than 5% interest, but you have to resist the temptation of putting this bucket at risk. Let it do its job, providing that safe cash, and this strategy will work. Now, I've seen a lot of people use these strategies, and I have my own opinion for which I like best, but I want to get your input here as well. Let me know in the comments below which of these three strategies you like the best and how are you investing for retirement? Watch through and let me know which do you think works best for your situation. Next in our retirement strategies is a little easier to set up and less risky. This one's called the matching or ladder strategy. This strategy is gonna be exactly what it says, matching your investments to your expenses. It's the ultimate in safety because you're exactly matching your expenses with safe bond investments that you know you'll, you'll have the money available when you need it. And whereas the bucket strategy only guaranteed those next two years or 18 months worth of expenses in those safe investments, laddering is gonna guarantee you have money every year to pay your expenses, but there is a trade-off that you'll have to make. So I'm gonna explain how this works. Here's how the ladder strategy works. And we'll use a graphic here I found on Fidelity. The rates are a little outdated, but you're gonna get the idea here. So starting from today, let's say you have $20,000 in living expenses every two years. And I know that is ridiculously low, but I wanna follow the numbers in the example. So you're gonna invest $20,000 in a two-year bond. When those two-year bonds mature, you're gonna get that entire $20,000 back that you can use to reinvest in bonds at a later date. I'm gonna give you some examples next, but as long as these are bonds of highly rated companies, then you're almost guaranteed to get that money back plus interest. With the rest of your money here, you see you invest in bonds maturing every one or two years. So you would invest another $20,000 in four-year bonds, 20 in six-year bonds, and so forth. You are creating a ladder of bonds. So even as some of those are maturing and you're using that money in retirement, you know you've got these other bonds maturing in future years. And remember, you're receiving interest from all these bonds twice a year, so you're gonna have some money to live on even without dipping into your investments. Each year or two when the new set of bonds matures and you get that big lump sum back, then use what you need to live on for the next two years and reinvest the rest at the top of your ladder. In this example, you'd buy another set of bonds maturing in 10 years. So you're always adding another rung to this ladder, another set of bonds that you can count on in the future. It's maybe a little harder to follow than the bucket strategy at first, but here your bond ladder is getting shorter every year or two because those bonds are maturing and paying back. 
to keep it going, you add a new bond onto the end of that future maturity date. Most of your bonds you're going to want in highly rated companies like Microsoft, Apple, and Chevron, those with a credit rating of A or better by the S&P. For example, two-year Chevron bonds pay 5.2% yield right now, and you can get as much as 6 or 7% yield in lower rated companies like Ford Motor. Pros of the latter end strategy are that it's the ultimate in safety. You've got bonds to cover your expenses in every year. You're also able to invest in those longer term bonds for a little higher rates. The downside is this strategy is more expensive compared to the bucket strategy. You're not getting much return from bonds right now, so that part of your portfolio, enough to cover your living expenses as much as eight years out, isn't producing much growth. This is a great strategy though for investors that have maybe a little more set aside and those that want less stress in their investments because it does match all of your expenses rather than just the next 18 months like we had with the bucket strategy. You get a little lower return though because you're not in that stocks portion but this strategy will make sure your money is there when you need it. Our third investing strategy is going to be good old fashioned dividend investing, but now don't think you can just invest in those highest yielding stocks. That 9% dividend yield on shares of the popular QYLD might look tempting, but if you had invested $100,000 in the fund five years ago, not only would your portfolio be worth just $70,500 now, you'd be collecting nearly $2,000 less a year after multiple dividend cuts. So there are a few rules you want to follow just to make sure that you get that cash flow you want, but also the protection you need first. And I'm going to get a lot of pushback from this, but unless you've got a huge portfolio, don't think you're going to be paying the bills with just dividends. A good dividend portfolio should yield between 4 to 6%, which means you're going to need as much as $240,000 to collect just $1,000 in dividends each month. Now, without that much stashed away, I don't want you chasing those higher yield stocks, but instead think about taking some of those capital gains as well. So on top of that 5% yield, you can expect another 5% or so in portfolio returns each year. And this is where you make up that difference on a smaller portfolio. So if you're sitting on $100,000 saved and you earn 5% in dividends each year, so around $5,000, maybe you sell another 5,000 in stocks to make up that difference. And I know a lot of you out there are saying, hell no, I never want to sell my stocks, but that's what you saved the money for, to use in retirement. Now would be the time to sell. Second rule here is you want to pick dividend stocks from different sectors. You can get a little bit more price appreciation with those lower paying dividend stocks in tech, while, while maybe you get a higher yield and safety in utilities and consumer staples. This gives you a nice balance between growth, cash flow, and the safety you need to guarantee that that money will be there. Of course, the pros of the strategy are that you've got a chance for a much higher return than these other two strategies. Your overall return in the three buckets is going to be around 5 to 8%, depending on how much you're able to keep in that long-term stocks bucket. The return on this matching strategy is even lower, though, because you've got more set aside in bonds. By comparison, dividend stocks have averaged to returns of 8% and higher for decades, so not only is this a great strategy to get as much out of your investments as possible, but it's also going to make smaller savings go further. And cons of the dividend strategy are that it's not as easy to follow as the other two. You don't have those strict rules on how to invest. Of course, it's much riskier as well with no money set aside to guarantee your living expenses. But then the best strategy is that you can combine these three, putting them together for that safety you need, but also the higher growth from dividends. For example, you might match your next four years worth of expenses with bonds, then divide the rest of your money into two buckets focused on dividend stocks. One a safer set of stocks and another with higher yields but a little more risk. You can use more than one strategy and less of another and, and mix and match and, and make the plan that's right for you. Check out that free cashback offer from SoFi with the link below or get started on your dividend investing by clicking on the video to the right for the 12 dividend stocks that put cash in your pocket every single week. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.